going back now because I have no vehicle back up. Um, we're in the Lake District. Yay! It's 8 a.m. and we're going to be doing the cold day around. This is unfinished business for me. I came here in 2018 and I only did half the round. Basically I went up Grisdale Pike, Hope Go Ahead and then came down the 5k valley, Coldale Valley. Beautiful valley. Um, but today I'm going to try and do the full round. It's 2022 so times have evolved. Uh, the only thing that might be the spanner in the works is the weather. We've got thunderstorms coming in later. Um, so we're just going to play this by ear. Obviously safety first. Uh, but I'm really excited to be here. And I'm a little bit all over the place because it was a bit of a rush and manic energy and everything, which is not my usual vibe. Um, so as you can see, my stuff has exploded everywhere from the fast corner turnings. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to get my kit sorted out and then we'll hit the trail and get clacking with this thing. That one. I don't even think I that. Cool. Let's go climb a mountain. I had been dropped off in Braithwaite near Keswick and made my way through the village to reach the trailhead. Morning. Ah, we're going up there, people. So if you are not car sharing or you're being dropped off, this is the Royal Oak here in Braithwaite. And obviously they've got places to park. Just down the right there, three pound all day, which I think is actually very generous. Well, one thing's for sure, I'm warming up. Um, geez, it is muggy, beautiful day, and uh, just hoping we can get high whilst the skies are somewhat clear. Anyway, leaving Braithwaite, here we've got a junction point, footpath coming down. This is the path that comes down from um, Coldale Valley, a glacial U-shaped valley, which we'll be looking down over, um, and often that's the way I come back. <laughs> We're just walking a little bit further up this wind ladder path stretch to sort of an old quarry and then we will begin our ascent up Grisdale Pike. Definitely gonna need to shed a layer and roll up my trousers. It is that warm. <laughs> there we go, check this out. So it's a quarry and not a quarry, but essentially a car parking space these days. So again, that way goes to the valley, walk up to the horseshoe and this is the way we're gonna be going up now is the key word. <laughs> Grisdale Pike, here we come. So quite often people do this route the other way around, but I have a bit of a long affiliation with Grisdale Pike. So it's quite nice for me to have the opportunity to walk up it again. So I'm gonna go this way, and then we're gonna loop all the way around to Sale and beyond. But we'll talk about the fells as we get there. All right, Grisdale Pike. Here we come. The Coldale round then is one of the most famous horseshoe routes here in the northwest of the Lake District National Park. In fact, the park itself was designated in 1951 and is actually a World Heritage Site as of 2017. As such, it's a pretty busy place at times. It's the most visited national park in the UK with over 20 million annual visitors. Madness, really, but it's also a bit of an illusion because, yes, in the valleys, on the roads, you can feel it. There's only really one main A road. The rest are just country lanes, accessing farms and homesteads. But in the fells, whilst there are honeypot sites and hotspots, you can also escape the crowd if you know what you're doing, where to go and when to go there. You know, one of 
the things I love about walking in the fells here in the lakes is that you gain elevation very quickly. I love Scotland, but there's places where you'll walk for the best part of half a day, if not a full day, to really get to the Munro that you want to tackle. Whereas here, everything's so accessible. See, that's where we were. Braithwaite, just down there, got dropped off on that corner. <laughs> And you can see the shimmering shores of Derwent water just there on the horizon. Look at this view, man, that is good, hey? That's where we're heading as a starting point. Pretty good, hey? And then we're gonna loop all the way around. It's actually quite a long way. Let's not look at that. Let's just get up there first. <laughs> it's uh, really cool, actually, because we've sort of left the grassy stretch behind now. And we're in this patch of heather and bilberry, which are two very well-known upland parts a plant, sorry, and uh, they're just sort of carpeting the hillside, as you can see. Sort of come August, September, all the heather's gonna be in flower. Beautiful, beautiful, uh, vibrant lilac purple colors, pinky even sometimes. And it's definitely one of those magical times that transforms these upper moorland areas, or heathland rather, just when the heather comes out. And of course the bilberries, they're in flower at the moment, but come uh, sort of late July, they'll have fruits on them. Obviously with the seasons and the weather and all sorts of different things affect how these landscapes evolve and change. You know, we've got erosion underfoot. Very often um, these footpaths are heavily used and actually that causes the sediment to wash down the mountains into the streams and the burns and then down into the lakes which therefore rises the level. It affects the oxygenation of the water and can therefore affect the life in the lakes and the rivers as well. So it's dynamic, it's ever changing. Sometimes positive, sometimes not. What does that look like here in the Lake District? I just love how Causey Pike is like, hello, I'm here, <laughs> come climb me. But first of all, we have to loop all the way around. <laughs> Here we go then, pushing up to the summit of Grisdale Pike. Just a uh, hundred, couple hundred meters to go. I like this bit, it gets a bit steeper. Scrambly is a strong word, but there's rocks and we get to go over them. Exciting! Grisdale Pike is the 40th highest Wainwright in the Lake District National Park, with three long ridges and two shorter ones, connecting it to the surrounding fells and valleys. The rock underfoot is mainly mudstone and siltstone, typical of the Skiddle group in the area. I love the walk up to its summit. Exposed in poor weather, yet breathtaking when the skies are clear. Look at this! Looking across towards Hope Gill Head, that's where we go. And then all the way into the Langdales, man. Scarfell Pike is over there. There's the wind as well. Where's the top? We're on the top. We're on the top of Grisdale Pike. 791, first summit of the Coldale Round. Woo! I've just dropped over the brow just to get out the wind. I'm gonna pop this one on. I'm sweating buckets, 
but I'm anticipating the wind shear is going to be quite quite intense as we uh, head back over the summit. So next stop is Hope Gill Head, which is a very significant mountain for me actually. I had a, I don't know, just a profound experience when I was last here. It's definitely interesting though, every time I am on this summit, or at least doing this route, I seem to have a lot to like mentally process. I feel quite burdened and my heart feels a bit panicky. So what better thing to do than eat food? <laughs> If I can find it. Ah, waffle. That'll do. <laughs> Behind me is the route that I've just walked from Grisdale Pike. Ahead is Hope Gill Head and Sand Hill. And I know that's sort of a part of the whole cold ale round thing, but I'm, I'm feeling a bit emotionally exposed today and I'm kind of wondering if I go up there, if I'm gonna just have a bit of a fall apart because the last time I was there, as I've already alluded to, was just very significant um, experience in my life. If you're interested in finding out just a little bit more about the revelation that I experienced, you can find out through the old video, um, the half cold ale round. But I think I'm actually gonna now just drop down to uh, Coldo House, which is just down there, and make my way up Crag Hill and just crack on with the, the loop. It feels a bit weird. I'm not entirely sure about my decision, but I'm sticking with it right now. Some days we just have to act on gut feelings. And for me, pushing on felt like the right thing to do. So that's exactly what I did, into the winds and vistas. behind me crag hill ahead and we have to go into a col and sort of up over the top and then it's just undulating over and over um, back down or along the ridge down the other side uh, but just here you can see behind me this is coldale uh, valley and there's coldale beck meandering its way along the bottom this is such a prime example of a glacial valley as the glaciers sort of moved down as it's melted and just moved because the ice is never still um, and eroded away the sides of the hills and the fells here. But interestingly, it's not just glaciers that have impacted the valley below, but also mankind. There are mines down there where lead and silver has been mined, Coldale mine and uh, a bunch of others. And it's really nice because actually the path through the beck or through the valley, sorry, not through the beck because that's a bit wet, um, is quite accessible. It's pretty flat and pretty, pretty steady going. So if getting into the mountains is just a bit too challenging for you for whatever reason, I still recommend heading up and down the valley there because it makes for some pretty stunning walking. <laughs> On my route, I passed several lovely families of Herdwick sheep, which are native to the Lakeland Fells. They are a hardy breed and spend much of their life roaming the hills, withstanding the cold and relentless rain with relative ease. Whew! Progress is being made, people! So, Crag Hill heading up this way, that's where we're going. Ahead we've got Whitler's Pike and then here to the now left, um, Grassmoor's up there, which is oh, such a nice walk. Sort of walking up from Crummock Water and Buttermere, Ranadale Knots. I love that route actually. Stunning, stunning bluebells. Anyway, Crag Hill, let's get up here. Grassmoor's actually fractionally higher, 852, as opposed to 839, which is the summit point for our entire horseshoe today, highest point. Got to get there first. Ready, steady, go! Yeah! Looks pretty moody, really. The sky is just full of it over the 
highest central summits here in the lakes. You can see uh, Newlands Pass there as well. That's kind of cool. So I could up there the other day. Da -da -da -da. There it is. Crag Hill, the summit. Obviously, you've got to head off and boom the trig point. Da -da 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 -da. I don't know what the music is today. Ah, Crag Hill, 839. Looking back over Grisdale Pike, and we can see the route over Sail and all the way back down to Derwent Water, actually. And as, you, I, as I've been walking, I've been like, oh, I can go this way and this way, and maybe I'll go this way. Suddenly, uh, having been dropped off has its advantages because you don't have to get back to the car, which is so cool. But anyway, I want to complete this classic horseshoe, so I will complete this classic horseshoe and maybe save a linear adventure for another day. Despite the views now being somewhat hazy, it was really nice to be able to see down over Coldale Valley, home to Force Crag Mine, which opened in 1839 and closed in 1991. During its use, lead, zinc and barium and a selection of other minerals were mined here. There's a couple of rockier sections as we're working our way down Crag Hill. I mean, it's nothing major, but again, if this is new to you, it might just be worth knowing about. Beautiful views down the valley there as well. So good. As far as I can tell, this is the top of sail. <laughs> Rather underwhelming, don't you think? So now, this is where we have options. So essentially the route splits. It's almost like two fingers in front of us. One heads over outer side and along, and the other goes over Causey Pike, which is a pretty famous summit in the area. Um, I'm fairly sure the classic horseshoe stays on the inner side, closer to the valley, but I actually quite like the idea of Causey Pike because I haven't been up there before. So that's now happening. I love the Lake District. It's like Lego. You build your own hike, brick by brick. <laughs> It's funny because like the whole way I've been debating like, ah, oh, maybe I just dropped down in the valley. I don't even need to publish this film, yada yada. If I don't show it, no one knows. But then it's like, no, like the mountains, this is where you process. This is where you can use your energy in a healthy and a productive way to work through the challenging emotions. And so that's what I've been doing. And yeah, sort of paying the, paying the benefits now or reaping the benefits. I'm struggling to talk today. I think I'm just a bit overwhelmed by I'm in the Lake District! Yay! Ooh, my ditch. This should be wet if it had rained. Interesting, because when the sort of peaty soil is exposed there's just no saving it like this is erosion in action unfortunately i am contributing to it actually i do want to see what happens if i stand in it oh nothing it's not as deep as it looks well it's pretty dry to be fair here we are look at this just truly stunning walking Causey Pike there, sticking out. That's where we're going. And then you can see it's quite a steep descent down the other side. And of course we've got the other fells here to the left. These are the other routes that you can take. So basically there's <laughs> half a horseshoe that you can do. 
there's a whole horseshoe you can do and then there's a third horseshoe that you can do which brings you up here and again we've got even more options further down but we'll get there when we get there En route, I pass by one of my all-time favourite plants, cotton grass. Used during World War I to dress wounds, it's super fluffy and always reminds me that there's a softer side to the fells and mountains through which I roam. So the path to stay higher goes along there and then along the ridge and we're dropping down now here and we'll meet the terminus of this path a little bit later down in the valley. Well, this is a very nice path. Look at this. Sunshine, epic views, peace and quiet. What more do you want when you're on a hike? Well guys, I've just been stood here for a while taking it all in, it really is beautiful. The road is literally a couple hundred metres below me now. So I'm actually going to stop and take a bit of a breather here, um, just in a sense of tranquility, peace, calm, you know. <laughs> um, and I'm going to wrap the film up as well. Uh, and I want to say, you know, thank you so much for joining me on today's little adventure. It's really surprised me just how quickly it's flown by. Um, but I've got a bit of time to kill. As I say, I don't know what's happening lift-wise, so I'm just going to sit here where I have signal and just chill and uh, take in this spectacular Lakeland view behind me. So I hope that this video has inspired you to get out, whether it's this walk or another. If you're interested, I have loads and loads and loads of different videos, day walks, multi-day hikes, bike packing adventures on my channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe and of course click that bell and you'll be notified whenever I'm running a live session or anything fancy or even upload a video, you'll get notified. Um, but that's it for me to be honest guys. I want to say thank you. As I say, it's such a privilege to be able to spend these days with you and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget, hashtag spend more time in the wild across social medias. I always like to see what you're up to. So please tag and share and until next time, stay wild. I'll see you soon.